Well, good morning everybody and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Today is another tournament video. We are out here on Clear Lake in Northern California and uh, we had some complications this morning. So what is a fishing tournament without a little bit of stress, you know? We showed up here last night, our, our flight got delayed by like two and a half hours. Didn't get as much practice on Sunday as we hoped. Then we get out here and Travis Moran let us use his boat, but either we couldn't figure out how to turn the trolling motor power on or the trolling motor's broken. And so we had to get uh, Jacques boat. Luckily, the guy we're staying with is a brand new nitro bass boat. And so we're gonna use this today. Hopefully we'll get back in the Lucky Tackle Box wrapped boat. But today is a practice day of Clear Lake. So it's our last chance to make the uh, make the college championship. We probably gotta get a top three or four finish this week, which is not impossible, but it's gonna be hard. But uh, Garrison, how you feeling? I'm feeling great. He's feeling great. Let's go catch We're happy. Dogs. God is good. The sun is shining and it's a beautiful day. Let's get on the water. Last of the morning for me with the drop shot. We're in a creek right now and it's a lot deeper than I thought it would be. We're sitting in 16 feet right here right off the bank. So we'll test out real quick if there's grass here and if there's fish kind of pulled up on this area. I could see this being more of an afternoon area when they pull up here and the water gets warmer. All right, test spot number one, zero fish. Well, there's lots of birds around here, and those are the birds that eat shad. When you're practicing, boys and girls, you want to be looking for uh, a lot of signs that can tell you where fish are, whether it's fish busting on shad, whether it's crawfish crawling crawl along the bank if you have you know, sh uh, clear water, or look for birds. And those birds right there, I believe those are birds that dive and eat shad. So that should mean there's shad here. I'm seeing a little bit of stuff on the graph kind of behind us. But again, I said we're from Texas. We're, we're new to Clear Lake, so we don't know a whole lot about what kind of shad we're looking for. You know, we did get some intel from, from people, but not enough to, you know, to tell us where to go whack them. We gotta do that ourselves. Got a fish. I've got a fish, boys and girls. <laughs> I was texting somebody back and I got one. It's a keeper. Oh, that's all right. Popped off. He took my worm with him. Well, that was first keeper of the day. On the drop shot next to these reeds. Nothing surprising here, but good to know. I actually got this crankbait from the bottom of Clear Lake when I was first here. Swinging this. Gosh! Oh, that. that was at least a three. Dang, you freaking mad. Dude, how did I miss that fish? Let me check, let me check that guy, yeah. That was so random. Gee, out in the open. That was a three pounder. I mean, oh gosh, oh gosh. There's a three pounder on a bed. See it? You want me to catch him? Oh, another fish on a bed right here. Dude, there's males all over the place. Dude, we can come in here and get a limit real quick. Although we can't see them in the morning. Okay, boys and girls, we have found a spawning pocket. Uh, about a one pounder on a bed right here. About a three pounder on a bed right there. Oh Dude. yeah, that's a better one. Have not figured out a big fish pattern yet. Maybe we figured Maybe. out there's some spawners. I'm gonna throw the drop shot around because that has been catching us fish. And we've seen all over the interwebs that the drop shot is the way to go right now. Dude, I'm picking up a frog. Tying it on. Take the troll. Take the troll of my motors. Practice is a constant Tie, retie, tie, retie, try this, try that. Sorry. You could have stayed. I didn't make you leave. Oh gosh. That's a three pounder, dude. That's a that's a four. Am I recording? Yeah I am. Dude, dude, that's a big one. All right. That was a three and a half on the drop shot. Okay. Again, just dragging it. That was not even, that was like the least work I've ever done to a drop shot. It was just kind of a drag. So you guys are probably wondering why we didn't uh, try to catch that fish there. Basically, it's practice. I don't have to catch all the fish that I see. I didn't even set the hook that hard. Just wanted to kind of see how big it was and then let it jump near the boat, so. In a tournament, of course, I would have fought that fish harder. Would have put the hook a little deeper into him and got the net, but in practice, we're just trying to see where these fish are at. And we kind of pulled into the next spawning pocket. We did see a boat pull out of here literally as we were pulling in. So if there's beds, we're not the only ones that are finding them. 
That's why I think the little drop shot deal on the edge of the reeds is going to be good. I will explain more as, a, as it happens this week. Oh, the dudes! Pretty cool! Whoa. Oh, dude! Shad ball right there. See it right there? Where? Birds! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy crap! They have balled them up. So I don't think you guys can see that, but those birds are eating a ball. Oh, you definitely can see that. There's literally a ball of shad that they have balled up. I'm gonna try to scare them with my punch rig. Oh, so many shad! That's insane. That dude. Is, dude, that is a ball. Oh, dude, that's this like National Geographic stuff. These birds are having a, a ball. They're literally eating the eating the shad from underneath, balling them up. Pretty cool. Get them, dude. Just... Oh, get them! Yeah, eat some lunch. Bass would only do that. Pretty crazy. So one thing you should always look for when you're out in the water is fishing docks. They're usually longer piers with like a fish cleaning station and fish rod holders, and that almost always means there's brush or rocks out from the dock. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, of course, there's also grass around these docks, but I'm gonna cast in front of it and see if there's any brushes down there and maybe some bass. Most of the time, these docks are used for crappie and catfish, but bass like to hang around too. Beautiful skip, Tyler. So a little early evening update for you guys. It is 4.40 in the evening. We're gonna stay out here probably 6.30 or so, but we had to stop back at the house and get my phone charger because my phone is dead. But uh, we're gonna kinda hit some more offshore spots. It's been a hard practice day for sure, but this is kinda the only full practice day we have, so we were giving it daylight to dusk. And so we're gonna be out here until about a, an hour before sunset, that way I can get a good time lapse for you guys. But I'm feeling good. You know, we, we have a few good areas we can catch them on drop shots, but I feel like everybody's gonna be able to do that. And so we're looking for something offshore that no one is, is gonna be able to either find or have the patience to fish. But us being from Texas, fishing offshore quite a lot, we have the patience to do that. So. Let's head over there, catch the bass. So the interesting thing about Clear Lake is that not a whole lot of it has any sort of structure. So it's kind of like just a big bowl with some two, you know, big bowl-like arms. And so, oh, you get stuck? You got it. So we are just kind of paralleling the bank here. There's not a whole lot of offshore structure. We will get to that a little bit tonight and tomorrow. But the majority of it is just trying to find fish that are stacked up just a little bit off the bank. Now you locals of Clear Lake could be telling me I'm doing something completely wrong but we will see. Oh gosh, had a fish. Sorry, I didn't set the hook up. I almost got you in the gut. <laughs> I had one, huh? Yeah, I know. I just said, I gotta set the hook up. I don't know why I set the hook sideways. So I pulled up to a little bitty grass line here and I tied on one of the pre-spawn spawn specials, the flashy swimmer, little Kai Tech with a underspin hook. Gonna see if there's any fish feeding on this grass line here. It is a very, very defined edge, so we'll see. This is what I'm used to. Cranking in the wind. Who is it? Matt Allen. I'll call him back. I gotta, gotta get the hair going. So we've arrived back here at the dock. We're just hanging out with, with the boys here. We're gonna make some hamburgers, I've heard. Jacques is the, the chef this week. Yeah, chef Jacques, could be, could be your new Instagram. But I kind of wanted to do a quick recap on how we caught our fish today. So as you can probably tell from the footage, it wasn't that incredible of a practice day. Of course, we started with a hiccup. We had the boat issue, but I actually got Travis's boat fixed it's right there. And we're going to be heading out, out on that in the next few days. But uh, kind of the only pattern that we were able to catch fish on consistently was the drop shot uh, kind of near some reeds and grass and so at the end of this video I'm going to do a, a big recap on exactly how we caught these fish but so the drop shot setup that I was using I'll kind of get it for you guys was the lose tp1 speed stick I'm sure I'm super overexposed right now the lose tp1 speed stick with the Mach 2 spinning reel and it's just a little wacky rigged uh, you know morning dawn colored trick worm so that's kind of how we caught them today that's how the guys won I think the top five guys in FLW placed uh, with this exact bait last week. And so, you know, it, it's a good pattern, but I want to find something that I can catch big fish at. I don't want to catch two to three pounders all day. I want to catch four to five pounders. And so I know that's a hard thing to ask, especially with only being on this lake, you know, two times in my life, but I'm feeling good. We're going to have some hamburgers and just have a good bro night, but we'll see you guys in the morning for practice day number two. I just sleep, Garrison. Not good. <laughs> I, mean, I slept okay. Okay. You're the first one. Oh, good. 
Here's from the first one up yesterday and the last one up today. We are making some scrambled eggs and bacon. And we're gonna head out in the water. Hopefully find some topwater bass this morning. We're already late. It's 5.40 whatever and the sun's already up. It's crazy. Practice is a time of consistent tying, untying, tying, untying, especially with top water because there's so many scenarios here at Clear Lake. There's rocks and there's grass. And I don't have that many rods. I didn't bring that many because I flew from Texas. So I've got to switch them between the spook, the buzzbait, and the frog. And if you're curious what frog this is, I think it's the new booyah with the paddle tail. Have I caught any on it yet? No. But do I want to? Yes. <laughs> so I literally picked up the blue trap for like half a second, guys, and I, I dude. That's a nice fish. That's a three pounder. <laughs> that is a fat, fat. Anybody around us? No? Gee, that's a beautiful fish. Literally just flipping a, flipping a trap around some shallow grass. <laughs> that is <laughs> a chunk. <laughs> it is awesome how fat. Look at this. This fish almost weighs two and a three quarters pound and it may be 15 inches. That is nuts. All right, well, we're going to keep working this grass a little bit. Maybe that's not a bad little plant. These bass are awesome. Gosh, that is so cool. All right, I will see you later, Mr. Two and a half pound, 14 incher. <laughs> One's gonna be doing that. Oh, grass. Oh, oh, I thought I ripped into a big one. Got one on the trap. Another one? Yeah. Two pounds. Right in the trap, dude. <laughs> right in the trap well. Another keeper. That's just two. Yeah, two and a quarter. All right. Fish number two. Oh, don't you shake. You got me in the hand. Fish number two on the trap, and they're eating it by the front hook, which for those of y'all at home, the front hook means they want it because they're going for the head. I would rather them choke it, but again, again, these fish are not big enough to choke a three-quarter ounce trap. All right, see ya. This day is going much better than yesterday. Oh gosh, that was a far cast. Gee. Fish, dude. I got a fish number three on the trap. I'm trying to keep him down. What? Or not? Two pounds and a keeper. Smaller. That's loud. There's one, one and a half. See you, bud. All right, this bait's this bait's coming off. As in, hidden on your right side boat. So now we've caught a few bass on the trap and had one bite on the jig up shallow in the docks. We're gonna come back and try these docks. But I say we move out to this hard grass line here. So I don't know how well you can see it on the GoPro. Probably bring out my big camera for it. But we've got some grass that kind of comes three to five feet above the ground right here. And I'm going to find the edge of it. So I'm going to kind of troll real quick for you guys until I find the edge. And then I'm going to kind of trace that along the shoreline until I know exactly where it's at and cast to it. No, we still got grass. Okay, well, I can't find the edge. All right, well, you guys get the picture. We're going to find the edge somewhere. I think it's back here, maybe. And basically, I'm going to cast my three-quarter trap down there in 10 to 12 feet of water and yo-yo it and rip it out. So at this point in the day, we've seen a few bedded fish. So we're kind of cruising around looking for a big one. Now, it's a three-day tournament, which means bed fishing, unless you're John Cox, is almost impossible in a three-day tournament. So we're just looking for one five or six-pounder to pick up right at the beginning tomorrow. That way, we can go catch a limit. Because, you know, we can throw a drop shot in a, in a rattle trap and catch some fish. So... We're just looking for one big one for the last few hours of the day. We'll do some punching later. Got a few more things to hit, but this is a good looking shoreline for a giant bedding bass. I'm on a bed. That's a huge bass. Dude. Really? A giant just came off that. Are you a, sure? I'm positive. I'm almost, if that was a bass. No, because I saw a bass go off that way. 
That's, there were two, and then there was another one came off the rock. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that a bass? I just saw something, something, something roll. No, he's on a bed, on a rock. On a rock bed. All three bass on a bed. Polygamous. Polygamous bass. It's a little mid-afternoon update. We have to be off the water by 1.30 and it's 12.30. So we have about an hour left to try to formulate some different patterns. I did, I did catch one off camera on a Carolina rig, kind of out for some docks on a big rock line. So that's again, another pattern. We have the drop shot pattern. We have uh, the offshore pattern. We have some bed fishing fish. Off camera, I also found a four pounder on a bed and it wasn't quite committed, but I think it'll get there. So we have one more pattern to try to figure out if the fish, if the fish are biting on it, and that's punching and flipping. So we're kind of going to flip the rest of the rest of the day, and hopefully we'll figure out something that's better out of all those four to hit tomorrow. Now it really depends on wind. So this lake can get windy. Today it's been absolutely dead calm, but I'm not expecting that kind of weather tomorrow. So it really depends on when the wind picks up. You know, we we want to head down south first if the wind is going to blow to the south. That way we can work our way back up north and not be stuck down there in some crazy waves. But I hope I'm not rambling too much. Practice is definitely a, a hard thing in my head just to kind of figure out what these fish are doing. But Garrison, whenever he has a, a feeling in his gut to go do something, we usually go do it. And he's been telling me to punch for like four hours. So we're going to do it. And we'll see you guys when we catch the fish. It's possible. Shoot. Garrison, you may have been right. <laughs> Three and a half. I'm recording too. Heck yeah. Ah. Uh, three. Yes. Good fish. Good fish. All right, Garrison, maybe you're right. Oh, popped out. Definitely almost three. He held on to it for a long time. Well, Garrison said we should go punching, and we did, and we got that, so. Maybe not a bad idea. Good thing is we caught a bass. We don't see any carp. Now the water is kind of destroyed, but we don't see any. So that's a good sign. Woohoo! Little bitty things. So this kind of means that, you know, we can catch fish on whatever we want to do. But that also means everybody else can probably catch fish however they want to do. Yep, there is. There's definitely fish in here. We are back here at the marina. About to go to the briefings meeting. I haven't eaten my lunch yet though. It's like 1.30 and I gotta eat lunch. Lunch is calling, my belly, my belly's calling. I wonder why, what I pack when I'm fishing out on the water. Usually it's just like lunch meat and cheese, kind of either stacked up or rolled up. And I got some, some pretzels and a uh, Rice Krispie Treat. Nothing crazy. Now walking inside, kind of walking through the weigh-in area, but as you guys know, Doc Talk is a thing that I like to stay away from. What Doc Talk is is basically when all the tournament guys gather around the dock, or around the pre-tournament meeting, and kind of talk about, oh, I'm catching them, I'm not catching them. I like to just kind of stay away from all that stuff because it's a lose-lose, as I mentioned before. Where are we going? This way? This way. We'll see you on side. We are lost at the Connachtai Casino. Sick attendance, man. So I think we have to get uh, a win to qualify. I thought it was gonna be like a top three, but it's gonna end up being probably a top one or two. Oh man, it's gonna be hard. But it seems like everybody else is not quite catching them either. 12 to 13 pounds is doing pretty good, so we'll see. So we just got out of the tournament meeting. There was, I think, 22 teams right now that have registered at the meeting. I think 27 registered, so if that's, if that's the case, the 27 show up, they're gonna round up to 30. Like, they have, you know, 30 boats, and then the top 10% qualifies to the top three. So the best we're looking at is that 25 teams show up, they round up to 30, and uh, we get to be top three. But right now it's looking like top two, He's gonna have to qualify. So we're just gonna idle out of this place. We're gonna drive back across to Jock's house, have some fun tonight. And then I think we have to be back at the tournament meeting in town, 45 minutes away or 25 minutes away in like three hours. So we're just gonna rake some tackle, maybe do some editing and then head over there. But we'll see you guys at the outro to talk about how we caught our fish. Well, everybody, we were back here at the dock, and so I thought that I would kind of break down kind of how our practice went for you guys, as I always do in my tournament practice videos and tournament videos in general. I love kind of sharing with you guys the thoughts that go on inside my head. That way you guys can hopefully make some of the same thoughts, or maybe better thoughts if I didn't, if I didn't make the right decisions this week. But the kind of the, the ways that we caught fish in practice, I'd say that the three main ways that we have established going into tomorrow's tournament day is the drop shot, the punch rig, and the rattle trap. Uh, now today, the, the drop shot that we're using is a, I think it's like a, 
seven inch straight tail worm, six inch and the robo worm in kind of what they call morning dawn color. So it's like a, a pinkish, pinkish brownish clear kind of color. I don't exactly know what it represents, to be completely honest, but uh, you never know what a sinkar represents. We don't even know what uh, spinnerbait represents. Actually, we know, we know what a spinnerbait represents. That was uh, on the Lou's TP1 speed stick. Seven, no, six foot nine. Six foot nine, medium light. This is my drop shot rod, and I love this thing. I've caught many big fish on it, including some big Malax smallmouth. And then I had the Lou's Mach 2 spinning reel on 15 pound braid to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. A lot of people ask me if I do throw a leader. I only throw a leader on a spinning rod when I'm fishing clear water. And even if it's not clear like the water at Clear Lake is, it uh, it still helps to throw a leader just to make sure the fish can't tell. And the drop shot weight is, I think, a, an eighth ounce tungsten with about a foot leader. And so that's kind of gotten us a lot of bites. We know that we can go to any reed patch in the lake and throw this thing and catch two pounders. But the ways that we caught our biggest fish the past few days was on this one right here. The six cents Quake, I think it's the 80. It's the three quarter ounce Quake, it's a one knocker. And as you guys saw from the video today, I was able to catch a few nice, nice fish on this thing as well. On the Magnum Rattle Trap Rod, you don't have to throw it on a seven six Rattle Trap Rod, but it helps me get longer casts and rip it out of grass better. And then it had the Tournament MB Lose as well. And then at the end of the day, as of course, I never listen to Garrison until the very end of the day. And that always, that's always when it works out best, is uh, he told me, he's like, you know, we should start punching. And I was like, no, 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 punching's not gonna catch any fish. But we started punching and uh, we were flipping around, both kind of big profile baits. So either the, I don't know if this is a rodent or, which one is this? Big one? Rodent. rodent. No, but the smaller one's the rodent, isn't it? So we got these fish in kind of two high profile baits, the rodent and the structure bug, both by Strike King. They're basically just beaver style creature baits. And with one ounce tungsten weights, bobber stopped on 65 pound braid. Uh, Garrison broke one off earlier because I tied a bad knot. I guess my snell knot is bad. But then once we tied Palomar and uh, Clinch Knot, it worked out fine. This is on the seven foot three and the seven foot six heavy rod by Luz, the uh, the Magnum flipping stick. And I believe this is the Custom Speed Stick Pro with some, seven, with some 65 pound braid. So basically what we did is just look for reed patches that had kind of points and dips in them on main lake areas. And we were able to catch two nice fish within like five minutes, right before we headed off to the, to the meeting. So that's kind of how we caught our fish. Which of course, weather could change, fish could change, and hopefully these clear lake bass start to turn on and we actually catch the bass this lake is known for, the uh, the seven to 15 pounders. So we'll see you all next time on Tyler's Real Fishing. Make sure you guys subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, drop a thumbs up and leave a comment. We'll see you guys next time.